Awesome. <laughs> and in three, two, one. Hello, perceptionists. Welcome to Perceptionist Anonymous. I'm Emily. I'm Christiane. And today we are joined by Rebecca Carmichael. She goes by Rebecca the Ghost Guide, and we are so excited to have her here. She's going to talk to us about all things paranormal, and I'm so excited. Um, but just a little bit of background on her. She has always been fascinated with the spiritual and having been exposed to paranormal and spiritual experiences from a young age, which I'm very intrigued about. She now aims to educate others on safe spiritual practices and understanding the phenomena happening around them. So hello, Rebecca. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for taking the time to drive out into a, a, a really secure, a secure destination to give us your time of the day. <laughs> well, I, I'm assuming that my signal is coming in well, so You're I'm fine. glad that everything is working as it's supposed to. <laughs> is yes, that a brick wall behind you? Like, is that a painted brick wall? Is that legit? <laughs> So um, I would love to be like, yes, we do keep bricks on the van. It's very no. cost effective. <laughs> um, but no. We like to be cold. <laughs> to feel like it's 1842 again. Yeah, right, right. Um, no, this is just, it's a flexible um, particle board based background. Okay. And it used to actually look like bricks itself. And we kind of gave it a paint because it was so dark. It felt like a cave in here, but like gave one that paint. you might go to die in. So like, we wanted to switch that up. Yeah. Right. I'd love to live in that, sa that exact environment is just, mwah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very cool. I was just, all right, moving on. Just curious. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So for those of you who don't understand the context, Rebecca, lives in a van and bus combo so that's what we were asking her like a badass <laughs> just to drive man and it's a wild world <laughs> yeah like where are you at right now or where are you traveling so ironically i'm actually back in wilmington which is where like all of this tiktok and everything took off um, i'm only here for a few days uh mm -hmm. just had to kind of come back and reconnect with a few things Cool. Um, but the bus is usually parked outside of Greensboro, North Carolina, where I have some family land and it's, cool. uh, it's like so picturesque. You're like driving and then there's this hill and then there's this bus on top <laughs> of the hill and that's my bus. That's so millennial. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Our tomato plants in the back and our weed plants are on the other side. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, there is a garden. I, there's nothing growing right now because it is winter. Because it is winter. <laughs> heard that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Right on. Oh, that's goodness. I heard. Very cool. Well, thank you. It's um, it's how we are able to afford and actually like live in our own home that we own because also millennial dilemma. What what is money? Money is cool. <laughs> that that's a fun thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's also, our I it's like our reality. Travel. Yeah. That's phenomenal, dude. Good for, did you outfit it yourself? Sorry, it's like not even like what you're doing with your. I mean, just, just <laughs> interesting. Yeah. 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 Like this is a personal interest of mine. Fuck spirituality. Yeah. What is going right. on? Maybe I'll, yeah, we'll we'll talk about it later. Just kidding. So, how did you come about living in bus, dude? <laughs> Um, that honestly was a 2020 kind of thing. Um, I had looked at living in tiny spaces for a long time, and you know, with 2020 going on. Um, I also work as a producer, performer, and playwright, and mm -hmm. uh, if you look at any of that, it's not really in existence right now, mm -hmm. so Except my partner and I, yeah, yeah, which, which is great. I love that, though, and yeah. Um, sure, that's hard. Yeah, uh, but my partner and I were kind of looking at options, and we're like, you know, if there was any way if there was any year to just do something different, it would be this year because all of our employment had dried up. Like we were actually living full time in the arts and actually doing ghost tours was part of that living in the arts because it started as a performance gig. And then it started to remind this deep part of me that uh, ghosts are a thing. And I was kind of like, oh yeah, this is, this isn't just performance anymore. Like I'm talking to stuff now and I'm trying to be like, hey, please don't touch this guest. She's really freaked out. Thank you so much. Okay, goodbye. Like I'll, I'll see you later tonight. Um, but yeah, we, we actually saw the listing for the bus online. We wanted to do our own conversion, um, but we saw the listing and we jumped on it because, you know, 2020, once again, we're like, what's gonna happen next week? Don't know. Let's just buy the bus. Let's find out. Yeah. 
so the bus has been an ongoing project because we had to build it out in a few different ways that like fit more of our lifestyle. Um, the van, however, was our January project. So I'm in the van right now and it's almost entirely finished. We wanted to do a test run before everything was perfect, um, which I mean, it'll never be perfect, but we wanted to do a test run to see what worked. Um, and then we're going to go back to the farm and uh, figure out what needs to be fixed and that kind of thing. So well, it's been a really great way to uh, knock off that kind of seasonal cold depression slash into January slash all the things that have happened in the nation slash, mm -hmm. you know, you name Stay it. <laughs> cool, dude. That's yeah, great. Yeah, so it's been good. <laughs> right on. So, so you're talking. Yeah, go ahead. Like, yeah, so, so tell Catching back on the ghost tour stuff. So you are, you used to be, or you are currently a ghost right. tour guide. So just describe for people what exactly that means. Because if, they, if you haven't taken a ghost tour, or if you're not familiar with those, that can be a really foreign concept. Like we live out by Virginia City in Nevada. So we've taken fucking a lot of ghost tours, but not a lot of people have. So will you explain a little bit about that? All right. So ghost tours, I, uh, I've been working with the Ghost Walk of Old Wilmington for a little over two years now. And I also worked with a tour company that focused on the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., as well as the oh. Jefferson Library and the Supreme Court building. Oh. And I also led my own tour um, in Georgetown, which is also in D.C. Oh, um, I was just there last year. That's fun. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, and all, all kinds of fun vibes there. Um, oh, yeah. there's my cat. Yeah. Hi, cat. Yeah, there he goes. Mine are fighting. <laughs> he was like, oh, you're talking about spirits? I will show up because I see them. Yes, uh -huh. yes, that's <laughs> Totally. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, really a ghost tour. When I first moved to Wilmington, which was another strange story of like me going off of intuition and like coming here on a whim with no job or anything. Oh, there's my dog. Wow, <laughs> you're getting all of the pets today. Um, <laughs> but I, I like to go on a ghost tour in the city to find out the dirty history. Mm. Mm, cool. Yeah. Because, you know, the historical tours, they tell you, they're like, oh, this is the pretty park that we're in. You know, they don't talk about, you know, like, for example, where All I'm at right now. And... Uh-huh. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is our town center. We, we definitely didn't have anything bad happen here. No Confederate battles at all. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Especially Wilmington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, so I, I took the ghost tour just as a guest because I was like, okay, I want to hear about the history that they don't want to talk about. I, I also connect with the ghost tours more because you actually learn about individuals within history mm -hmm. rather than, and here is the war and here sure. is the thing we don't talk about, you know, that kind of thing. Point. Um, so yeah, I, oh, another fun thing um, for anybody who may eventually wind up in Washington, D.C., if you ever want to know why our political structure is so dramatic, do look into the ghost stories of the Capitol building because mm. there are many. Really? Yeah. Huh. I always tell, yeah. Look at the capital cities, honestly, in every state or like where capital cities used to be. <laughs> and there is City? drama. Yeah. Yeah, I guess um, you have to establish it somehow, huh? Right, yeah, through their drama. dominance. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. And I'm just like, why, why? <laughs> dudes, dudes, that's why. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was watching this well, thing about totally unrelated monkeys, monkeys trying to fend off the, the thunder by making itself bigger than the thunder. So it's very reminiscent, I guess. <laughs> anyway. I know. I think that maybe with the Capitol buildings and stuff too, because like I used to work in the capital of Nevada. I live in California now, but I used to work in the capital of Nevada and it was like in one of the oldest buildings. And that was like one of the most haunted buildings I'd ever been in because again, capital cities, right? So that's like where they have the oldest buildings of any location, basically, or very nearly, <clears throat> you know? And so it's always trying, just like, you'll walk down the street and you're like, oh, there's stuff here. There's stuff just, they're just everywhere here. Okay. That's mm -hmm. nice. Uh, thank you for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think like that, like it almost is like a magnet because it's already the old stuff and then it's a ton of energy because of all of the political drama and everything else that happens there. So it's just like calls everything in. Well, I can yeah, see them trying to maintain the history of the area too. And so the spirits being drawn to main uh, a maintenance of what they remember. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I guess I could see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I think about just as far as spiritual energy is concerned with what happened this last month at the Capitol building. Knowing what I know about, <laughs> oh my goodness. Go 20th. Remember my 29th birthday forever. 
Yeah, right? And so will everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but now I think about just with the spiritual energy in there, the stories that um, I told, and I was just thinking, I was like, what? I wonder what they had to do with different things. Because I feel like there may have been some spirits who were kind of like egging people on. And then I feel like there were other spirits who were like, uh, excuse me, excuse me. You're a bit loud. You're a bit loud for in here, you know? Um, and I wonder too, are either of you familiar with the story? Yeah, yeah. Um, are any of you familiar with the story of the demon cat? Of course, no. demon cat. No, but I think so. Share away. I would love to hear okay. about so, um, this. So <laughs> this story goes that before a national tragedy, um, somebody working at the Capitol building will see a black cat and there are different sides of this because cats used to be all over the capitol building because it was a port city oh yeah nice oh she froze yeah. rebecca oh back gone all right you're back sorry about that it's okay you're good. i was like Oh, no. <laughs> check check no. yeah we got we got to the point where you said port city and then we were gone yeah. okay <laughs> um other thing port cities being haunted that's a whole other thing that's why you know savannah charleston wilmington uh st augustine well washington dc also like a port city so port cities you all you always have a surplus of cats because they are on the boats to help control the rats Mm -hmm. Well, the Capitol building also had the same concept because the, well, our representatives of our nation, they had a trash problem because they were just very trashy. They just mm -hmm. would leave their trash out everywhere. And I don't know if there were just no janitors or what. Yeah. This is like, you know, early history for our Capitol. But um, so they got a bunch of cats to take care of the rats in hopes that that would fix the trash problem. So this demon cat could just be the spirit of a cat. But here's the thing, the cat shows up and is pretty obvious. Some people get dramatic and they're like, and the cat makes in itself into the size of a panther and then leaps at whoever it sees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and spins its head around three times back. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, but I'm wondering if somebody happened to see the cat before the insurrection, because the cat was seen before these huge national tragedies. It was seen before Katrina. It was seen before 9-11, for example. Mm -hmm. um, it was seen before a few mass shootings. So I don't know. I'm wondering if that'll kind of come about in the next few weeks. But I also understand nobody really wants to talk about demon cats right now either. So. Yeah, everyone's like, I could really rather not. <laughs> like, tw but have you yeah. seen 2020? <laughs> have you seen it? I mean, do we have time? <laughs> They're like, yeah, I saw the cat. It doesn't fucking matter. There's so much stuff going on. Like, it's just one of the seven demons I saw this week. I get, right, the seven plagues. <laughs> um, I'm curious, what what do you say to, like, skeptics, like, hearing, hearing this situation, hearing uh, what you're saying here, like, what, how do you explain this, or what do you say to people that are, like, that dismiss it? Uh, as far as just, like, spirits yeah in, in yeah general. explaining the spirituality part, okay. part of it yeah so when i first started actually posting on tiktok it seems so long ago it's really not um <laughs> damn it <laughs> when i first started posting yeah I, I just started to share like weird photos that i captured or my guests would capture on the tour mm -hmm. and some of them are just freaky. I mean, they are just, you've got like clear skulls in windows. You've got people standing behind people. You got half a person, you got a head somewhere floating. I mean, there's just like a lot of weird stuff. So I just started to share it because, you know, that seems cool to me. Yeah. And I knew with sharing it, I would likely come across some people who were like, this is fake, to which I'm like, that's adorable. You think I could do that with my <sighs> lack of technical skills? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I started out the platform really saying, hey, I tell stories. You don't have to believe it. And the thing is, if you want to live your life closed off to the possibility to that, that's where you're at in your life. I'm, I'm not here to convince people. I'm here to 
try and create some ease for people who are experiencing these really creepy things or just things they can't understand or explain. And, you know, to help them be like, oh, you know, the, what the example I always give is something like, I smell bacon in the morning and I don't have to be afraid of it anymore because that's, you know, old Bess who lived here 50 years ago who always made bacon for her husband. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be afraid of that anymore, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's great. I, I, I really rec I really appreciate your, um, how you said you were coming out with your stories about being um, just, I tell stories, believe you or not, if you, if you want to. And I think that that's a really healthy way to go about that. Yeah. I think that's super important just for people in general in any spirituality, like other people's experiences aren't your responsibility. So whether or not they yeah. want to believe in it or not, it's kind of not your responsibility either. It's just for those who come. I mean, I get that on my platform all the time is people being like, this is the devil you're talking to. I'm like, that's nice. He's actually a pretty sweet guy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure it's the same thing. It's just that, that, you know, whatever fears people want to have to limit them is totally their responsibility. And Right. And fear makes people loud and aggressive and they tend to, you know, it makes people want to project and grab out to the other person. So to justify their fear. So that's, I get it. So absolutely. Tell us a little bit more about your different, like, like, how did you get into this? What is your kind of spiritual background? How did you know you could start to see them? Like, yeah. That? because I think people a lot of people there's so many different types of spirits that sometimes people just demonize them all sometimes people are like oh well I saw that one thing in my corner when I was six and then I blocked out everything for the rest of time like how did how did you get into this to feel comfortable to see them wow uh what a what a life journey you would like for me to put into this little box real quick 30 <laughs> frame it really no. nice elevator <laughs> pitch uh, I didn't see stuff, but then I didn't see stuff, but now I see stuff again. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but, uh, All right. Next question. <laughs> Good. Uh, no. So, uh, <laughs> really, I, when I was when I was very young, I saw a lot of stuff that I couldn't uh, really describe properly, and I grew up in a religion where there was heaven and hell. And there were angels and demons, but we don't really talk about the demons. And then, you know, people, when they pass, they either go to heaven and hell and they deal with whatever's on that side. So when little me is uh, terrified of the uh, creatures walking up and down the hallway every night and I'm coming to my mom crying at night or in the morning because I was so scared of just like leaving my bed, just being like, mom, please, can I shut my door? I, I don't like the way that they're walking, because they, once again, they're not, they were not demons. They were like these shadow people, like really tall sorts of things. And mm -hmm. nowadays, it's if I were to see them, I'd be like, yeah, I'd just be like, I'm gonna shut the door and let them go. But as a child, I had no explanation. Yeah. When I went to my uh, religious congregation, it was very much like, you see these things? Are you evil? And I'm like, no, I'm a child, you know? I, what? Yeah. So I dealt with a lot of scary stuff growing up. Um, and it also, my, my family's come around uh, during my younger years into like my teen years. There was like, there were some issues there and that kind of thing. Fortunately, we've been able to work, to, we've been able to work a lot of them out, but the issues on the physical plane also create issues on the spiritual plane. So we were also inviting stuff without even recognizing it. Oh, yeah. It was a lot. So me not being able to deal with this stuff, I did a lot of work to shut it off. I shut it down and I turned super into being, I'll say I was a Southern Baptist Christian. That was a thing. And that's not to say anything against Southern Baptist Christians. I, I just, too. I found out later. It, yeah, it didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried cool. so hard, you know. Um, but uh that happened. I shut myself off, but it's like kind of when I was coming into my later teen years, I noticed that I was starting to have these experiences where I was meeting people who would have these kinds of like really, really thick kind of, I hesitate to use the word attachment because some people will take this too far, but they, they had some not awesome stuff that would hang around them. Mm -hmm. I could see it. I could let them know about it 
But then I also had to make the decision for myself to say, hey, if they're not going to do something about that, I've got to choose to accept that and whether or not I'm going to stick around these particular people. Um, so that was happening. And then, oh my goodness, then college is happening. And then that was a whole, what is college? I don't know. Um, you mean like you're in your spiritual young- development? Yeah, yeah, because I was having the same kind of stuff happening, and I was having my own spiritual awakening, aka I was just getting more open-minded, and I was learning about all these ancient religions and spiritual practices, and learning about different deities, and all the while, I'm just like, I don't know enough about enough to say that I am one thing. I'm just like, I'm just going to be open-minded from here on out, Mm -hmm. so Oh, goodness. After college, I did some corporate stuff, like as far as like in the theatrical vein, um, I got into more producing, I shut more of it off. And then eventually, years later, I'm winding up in Wilmington, and I've started to open back up more. And I become this ghost tour guide after having been one in the past. It's just, it's, it's like going up and down their valleys and their hills and I feel like my entire life has kind of been leading up to the point where I could finally recognize what has happened to me to see it both in the mind frame of where I was at the time but also be able to look back at who I am now and say okay so categorize that Mm -hmm. you know take that fear you can put it here and you know like understand what was going on here reflect on Um, it reflect on it heal from it um right. and Get some closure finally I, that. yeah like I finally feel like I'm in my present right now um right. I've still got some stuff I'm healing from and like learning from and that kind of thing sure. but uh it's been interesting having this platform because it makes me ask myself the really difficult questions before I ever ask it of anybody else and I love that Mm-hmm. I hope that answered your question because God, I feel like that was a really long. <laughs> no, it was great. It was Very great. Yeah. Um, when you said, talk about shadow pit people and you said a couple of times, like not a demon and that sort of thing. Can you tell everybody a little bit more about the different kind of classifications, the wrong word, but the layers and types yeah. of beings that you see as far as spirits go spirits with the air quotes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, one thing I like to preface with is, depending on where somebody comes from, depending on what their belief system is, depending on who they talk to, they may have different titles for these things. Mm -hmm. And as I tell everybody, yeah, exactly. You know, some people call them fae, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, I typically don't call a lot of this stuff fae because that's not what I relate to, but then I have like a bunch of friends who are like, oh yeah, that's fake. And I'm like, okay, great. Like, that's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah everyone um, has the, the idea of it, but they all have different names for it. I agree. Cool. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, I, as far as like classifications, uh, basic classifications, I think would be uh, spirits who have lived and died on the physical plane. Mm-hmm. And then you have spirits who have not lived and died, or if they had, it's from such a far off reincarnation that it's just kind of on a different platform. Um, so as far as spirits who have lived and died, you know, we're talking animals, we're talking anything in the uh, physical, who came, lived and died in the physical and then passed on. So as far as those are concerned, um, typically what I see are you have your, um, uh, do, do, do. I said reincarnation, which is right. Now I'm thinking of another word, uh, residual. That's the word. I was like, it's R, R, this is R in sign language. So I'm like, residual R, is a great word. Um, <laughs> um, residual spirits, they may not necessarily be intelligent, but they may repeat a lot of what they did in life. So I mentioned earlier making bacon, you know, or maybe it's always walking up the stairs at the end of the day in order to go to bed. Maybe it's walking down the hall. Maybe it's going to the garden. Maybe it's going to work. Uh, you, some of these spirits, sometimes it's a matter of energy actually just being left behind and replaying itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the spirit is there and they may not recognize that they've shed their physical I, I, I call the skin suit they they may not recognize they shed their That's skin suit creepy. so 
It's legit. Yeah. But yeah. Damn. <laughs> Stretchy. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like. Ew. My skin suit. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> um, but uh, you as you start moving into more intelligent spirits, uh, say you run into a ghost who does not know that they have shed your new favorite term of skin suit. Um, <laughs> they sometimes can actually be talked with, you know, like if you're having issues in your home where like a spirit is kind of running into you and you're running into it for whatever reason, maybe in just like feeling or vibe, or maybe they're just like, who is in my house? It's very confusing sometimes. Um, that's when you can sometimes help them to become a little bit more intelligent. Sometimes the spirit only needs to be reminded like, Hey, it, it, this, this is, you know, 2021. It's hard. I love your house. I mean it well. Yeah. yeah. Time is so different. Um, but it's the intelligent spirits that you can actually like communicate with. And the amazing thing that I found, especially in Wilmington are the amount of intelligent spirits there are spirits all over the place who were just like, yeah, I just thought I'd stay. I, <laughs> it, yeah, I know I died about 100 years ago. I'm fine with it. Wow. You know? They're all, you guys got um, some shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, I don't have to pay rent um, or eat, but, but I can are... see. I'm going to watch the show. <laughs> I don't have to pay rent. Yes. I mean. <laughs> That's funny. The human exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'd probably stay and watch the show Skin too. Skin suit stuff, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, damn. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> well, well, that's when you get also spirits who, you know, they may recognize that they've passed, and they're like, hey, like this is what happened to my first house that I rented when I moved to Wilmington. One, it was like a train stop for spirits. I was in between three, like within ten block radius, three massive unmarked grave sites. Wow. Uh -huh. um, unmarked oh. for various reasons yeah so you just had spirits just moving around and like we'd see them everywhere and it was just like hello you're new hi uh. hello um but there was one woman in particular who she was the mistress of the house um she knew she had passed she was very aware of us she was very aware of her surroundings and we could converse with her um, it was pretty simple because she was just kind of always around. She chose to stay there because she loved her house. Um, and she actually, oh goodness, I could tell you all kinds of stories about her. But um, mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that she did for us was she warned us about mold that was creeping up into the walls after Hurricane Florence. Otherwise, we wouldn't have known. Wow. Um, how did she do that? She would stand in front of the wall and uh, she actually would manipulate the, uh, like the pressure in the room. Um, like, you know, like before a storm comes, it's like yeah. the pressure drops and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was like her, like she was her own storm sometimes. Okay. Wow. So she would like stand there and just like pressure drop. Wow, and I would just be like, why, what? Yeah. And then the wall eventually started to bubble. And that's when we were like, oh, cool. gotcha. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah, that's cool. What other our ways our relationship you... with her came a long way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this is not a place that you're in anymore. She's living in a bus now. We've gone through that. Well, one. I didn't know if it's her family's house or whatever. Oh. Yeah. Um, no, this was, uh, yeah, she was not familial uh, to our uh family um funny thing was she didn't really like us when we first moved in um she when she was a very she was a very conservative religious woman um and she was very upset that we didn't want to go to church on sunday mornings so she would open the curtains like we'd be sleeping and just you know oh my gosh wow um and so we had to have a talk with her and just be like hey it's not our thing. Like we're, we're, we're not going to do that. You know, um, she didn't like how my partner and I were living together prior to marriage. And so, uh, a few times he and I were doing stuff and, <laughs> um, she would set off the smoke alarm. Oh my gosh. Crazy. Ugh. Yeah. 
just in our room. She would set it off just what to uh, let us know that she disapproved. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. missing out. She's um, bummed because she doesn't have a skin suit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we had a talk with her on a few things. She didn't like the dog inside of the house. Like she would regularly communicate and be like, you shouldn't play with the dog in the house. Dogs should be outside. And I'm like, no, no, this, this big potato here, she's, she's going to be in the house. A different time. Um, she, she don't do outside. Yeah. So um, we, we actually, and this is one of the things that I talk about uh, with people um, is to, in some cases you can work with a spirit and do simple things to make them happy so that you can be happy. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's compromise and it's consent. Like I always tell people too, I'm like, Hey, if you're not giving a spirit consent to do these things, you know, like to open the door, to open the, you know, curtains or stuff like that, like you, it's your responsibility to say, Hey, this is my house too. So when we did our cleansing, it, which, you know, we regularly do cleansings, but when we did our like initial big house cleansing, it wasn't with the intention of kicking her out because we're like, obviously she loves this home. This is, it's good for her to be here. She's not hurting us. We're just not getting along right now. So we were just like, we went to the front door and we got like our pets together and we were just like, hey, you love the house. We love the house. You're different from us. And that's fine, but we both love the house. All of us love the house. Let's work together to keep the house up and love this house. We may not always get along, but we're gonna try. And we cleansed and we got the energy up and things were a lot better. We just kind of checked in a lot after that. Is but that how... she also had, oh, sorry. No, go on. I was just seeing what other ways people could interact with these spirits, oh, okay. like what other ways to set boundaries, but go on. Oh yeah, well, um, Basically, last thing I wanted to say about her was uh, it actually really worked in our favor. One time I brought something home from the ghost walk that was rather awful. Um, it created some uh, sleep paralysis and like some bad dreams and like really, really bad, 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 bad stuff. And she, our ghost, set off the smoke alarm just to wake everybody else up in the house. And that's when I realized we all were having nightmares at that time, all of us that night. And we were all being told like really sinister, like awful things about like ourselves and each other and all that stuff. And we all just like sat down. It's like 2 a.m. And we're all like, hey, hey, this is weird. I feel like something else is in my head right now. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the smoke detector, we had to um, actually take both batteries out in order to make it shut off. There was no smoke in the room. Um, there was also a detector right next to it, just on the other side of the hall. It didn't go off. Wow. So wow. that's why yeah. I say befriend your ghosts. Yeah. You, you never know when mm -hmm. that's going to help you out. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. Dang, that's really cool. So what other, like, I mean, I love the ghost story, like, concept here that's going on and that like, you can share more stories because I feel like it really validates people's experience. Um, but with those things, like those really nasty things that you just mentioned, like, how did you get rid of that? What do you recommend people do if they have something that's really, really nasty in their space? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So this runs into the non-consent thing. Like, for example, I don't like having my sleep messed with. I don't like being touched either. So people are like, yeah, something scratched me the other night and I, it didn't really make me feel good. And I'm like, yeah, that's called non-consent. It works the same way in the spiritual, you know, uh, mm -hmm. no. So in order to get those out, it's like, I like to create the understanding of like what we're talking about, you know, like what exactly are we dealing with? Are we dealing with the thought form energy, something that may not be intelligent, but it's just kind of the goop. Like if you have a big fight or something like that, it's the goop that's still in the air that keeps down the energy, you know? Um, or if you have a uh, kind of the next level of that could be a negative thought form spirit where it starts to kind of create its own language a little bit and can actually call out to other spirits that wow. are kind of lost and trying to figure it out. Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on out there. They, they ain't busy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I tell people, I'm like, you know, if you never were aware of any of this before, it doesn't affect you now either. It's just, you know, take the information or don't like, you know, um, 
but you have those, you have, um, sometimes you have really angry people, you know, who stick behind and they're very confused. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the people, like if you're dealing with an intelligent spirit, you can try to once again, communicate with them and try to be like, Hey, why are you angry? Like, why did you follow me home? In Wilmington, we've got a few spirits and a few spiritual spots where these are definitely guys who have lived and died. They're a bit too interested in the ladies and they will follow ladies home. Hmm. Like the ax man from yeah. American Horror Story. <laughs> yeah, like if, as if it's not bad enough to have to tell people off at the bar, then it's like, okay, you followed me home. This oh. is no, 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 Gosh. no, no. Mm -hmm. um, but then like going into what I think more of what you were alluding to, the the higher stuff right like the more some people will call them demons right the the whole like yeah likely have not lived or died um deities perhaps some people call them loa um mm -hmm. so i well i should say as far as loa is concerned my partner is also uh, a hoodoo practitioner so like that's a cool. regular term for us <laughs> oh my god we need to have him on to come talk about that That'd be yes. dope. Yeah. Talk about wild rides. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Well, he anyway. So with that, as far as like higher spirits go, um, you could have your parasitic kinds who just live mm -hmm. off of your agony or your fear or your anxiety or your depression. That's why I always say mental health and spiritual health are so interlinked. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you, yeah, like if you think you have a spiritual attachment that's bad, you know, see if you can get a counselor, see if you can talk with somebody who cares about you, who will actively help you, because that also takes it off. You know, your strength and your will with yourself directly affects your spiritual strength. I agree. Um, but as far as like, big stuff goes like when people start rolling out the whole like demon thing I'm like yeah um, most higher level stuff has better stuff to do mm -hmm. I mean yeah. it's just kind of then, yeah then, mm -hmm. yeah yeah I'm like they, I imagine they'd rather go talk to a world leader or something like that and that's not to you know Mark and knock accounting. Off any, yeah yeah like <laughs> <laughs> and like you know we're all telling our stories we're all in the tapestry of life but I'm also like yeah I don't think something like hi hi is gonna be like oh yes Rebecca the ghost guide let me go mess with her you know I've always wanted to be on um, TikTok <laughs> <laughs> yeah right it's like <laughs> that's funny back into yeah uh like what to do about these negative things right yeah. I like to, and the reason why I went on a little tangent is because um, I like to understand what I'm dealing with. Because in understanding what you're dealing with, that helps you to kind of rev up on how you're going to deal with it. So mm -hmm. if you're dealing with an intelligent ghost, someone who's lived and died, try and speak with them. Um, you don't have to be this like psychic medium person to you know, use different forms. Like, uh, I, I like pendulums personally. I, I love pendulums. It's, mm. it's very simple. It's divination. Um, excuse me. Dowsing Some people rods. like pulling cards, you know, mm -hmm. dowsing rods, you know, just basic yes and no. It provides protection for you because it's your body that's in control. It's just spirit that's helping to move these things. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're dealing with something like more parasitic, I, I don't have time for those. I don't have room for them. I, I'm not interested in them. And that's why if they are rolling up in my personal space, they're leaving. Mm -hmm. So, Good. well, I mean, I, I say that for anybody, people who are like, oh, I, I have this thing, but I don't know if I should tell it to leave, but it makes me really, it makes me feel bad. And if I'm like, right. Yeah. It's like, then make it leave. And as far as a cleansing is concerned, what matters is what matters to the individual doing the cleansing. Mm -hmm. So if that, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, we are what is in control of the cleansing. What we use is like a battery. It's not the machinery. Totally. Mm -hmm. 
for some people that'll be, you know, a cross and a Bible. And I've seen people do wild things with a cross and a Bible. And I'm like, that is great. For me, I, I roll up with maybe some stones or some incense. It kind of depends on what I'm working with. Sometimes I'll, I'll use kind of like a cleansing spray. Um, and this is stuff made by Old Southern Conjure, AKA my partner. Um, but <laughs> he makes stuff, so I'm like, you know. <laughs> That's adorable, by the way. Quirks and Conjure. I heard that was like, yeah. no effing away. That is so cute. So moving on. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> But that's the thing. He he's also been um, incredibly helpful with helping me learn more about herbs and that kind of thing. I'm more of a spirit person. I'm also an air sign, so I like I roll in with my air, and I'm like, that's okay, cool. let's do this. Um, but baby yeah, tornado. Yeah, I mean that's what I do. I, I work with my hands, and I I can cool. imagine the kind of energy around, and I kind of work to move that up and kind of move it around. Nice. Um, but some people, they, they want to use uh, flame, like they want to use uh, candles or other like elements like the earth or water, stuff like that. It doesn't matter so much what it is as much as it matters what it means to the individual using it. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there are different tools and tricks and I have more information on my YouTube and stuff like that on like how different people can do cleansings depending on their different backgrounds and that kind of thing. But if you, if you have something that is no good and not making you happy and you can't compromise with it, get it out, raise that energy. So it's just like, oh, I can't be here. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, that's great. What do you think about poltergeist? What are your, what are your ideas on that? Well, okay. Poltergeist, from my understanding, it's, you know, noisy ghost, right? It's mm. a ghost that is powerful enough per se to regularly manipulate that within our physical plane right so you're not I don't necessarily see that as like a kind of specific classification because you could be dealing with somebody who's lived and died and they are very connected to the physical and they're able to do a lot of stuff or you could be dealing with you know yep. She'll come back. There we go. She's doing pretty good for being <laughs> wherever she is at. Hi. <laughs> Cut out a little bit. But... <laughs> yeah. It's okay. okay. You're uh, fine. Usually it's me that cuts out too, so this is pretty nice. <laughs> okay. I'm glad to let you off the hook on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's usually me where I'm like, ah, oh, shit, everyone's talking and I'm just stuck here because oh, I live okay. way up in the mountains, so my internet is not great. Yeah. So you're good. You're fine. I hear you. Um, so what I was saying, uh, poltergeist, not necessarily a specific classification, just because you can have somebody who's lived and died, who is very connected to the physical plane and able to manipulate things, just as you can have somebody or something that is not lived and died that uh, can affect, you know, even emotion. I think people don't think about how they can be affected emotionally. And that's when people, some people are like, well, I'm not an empath. I'm like, you don't have to be an empath to have feelings and like <laughs> walk into a place and feel something like, come on. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, I think a lot of people hinder themselves by believing or not believing that they are something or they're not something, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not a priest, so I can't do a cleansing. It's like, yeah. what? That's you know, like, yeah, like, what? why? <laughs> that's okay. Um, they, they're some people are afraid you know and that's and that's okay right. people are that's why we're making the show <laughs> yay <laughs> i mean i'm an active psychic yeah. and i still fucking like spirits that i can when i see them i'm like cool i don't want to talk to you <laughs> like, you need to leave me alone like i see spirit guides and they have a very different energy signature than spirits do they're, hmm. they're just very yes good. um the energy is totally like night and day like when you see a spirit it's like almost a hollow energy i guess is for lack of mm. It like feels hollow. It doesn't feel fully formed. Yes. It feels concrete. And then when you see your spirit guide, you're like, oh, okay, you're cool. I feel you. You're fine. You are sentient and conscious uh, <laughs> on your own. Mm -hmm. Cool. But it's going to be scary because the energy feels yep. foreign and weird as opposed to a spirit guide where you're like, okay, your energy feels helpful and lovely. And I, I get this. Mm -hmm. And then when it's like a ghost, you're like, you're not right. me. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> 
what it said. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that you brought that up too, because I get that question a lot too. They're like, but how do I? It's a great frame to freeze on. <laughs> You're good. I'm. <laughs> it's okay. Oh um, yeah. How do you? You you ended, you were like, yeah, I get that question all the time. And then you froze like this. And it was great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I'm glad that you brought that up because people ask that, you know, they're like, oh, how do I know if I'm talking to my spirit guide? And I'm like, well, if you're talking to your spirit guide, you wouldn't be afraid of them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because you, there's that recognition, you know, there's the like sees like in some form or another it's that soul connection it's the soul tie so when people are like well yeah this thing says that it's my guide and i'm like yeah but it makes you feel uncomfortable right mm -hmm. and not in the challenging try to be a better person uncomfortable as in like you don't feel right mm -hmm. yeah sure. yeah you feel, in, you feel in danger in one way or another mm -hmm. yeah yeah, for sure. That's and cool. nobody should feel like they're in danger. Like spirit guides, that's, I feel like you'll agree with this, that that's not why they're here. They're here to help preserve us. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. We've spent so much time getting you to do better. Nope, not anymore. I'm having a bad day. <laughs> well, yeah, I get it. Cool. So just for fun, do you have like a favorite story that you tell? Like that you, oh, of course you are. Look at us go. I was so going to ask favorite place, but <laughs> huh? I was going to ask favorite place. <laughs> oh, either one, either one. Favorite place with filled with, filled with ghosties. <laughs> favorite ghosty story, or both. I mean, you can you can Ooh, call it. your um, show. <laughs> I'm I'm just here. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh goodness. I'm so bad with favorites. Oh, I'll go with okay. what I'm feeling. Um, just powerful ones, but yeah. ones that you recall. Mm -hmm. hmm. So I will say one of my favorite spots in Wilmington is um, at the Bergwin Wright House. And we recently did an episode uh, where we worked directly with two of the directors there um, who knew all the history. So it was so cool to go in and connect with spirits and have people who knew the history right there to be able to confirm, or uh, in some cases, not quite deny, but just kind of offer more questions on what we were sensing. Mm -hmm. um, but there, like it was a funny thing when I was regularly doing tours and during the on season, you can have, you know, uh, sometimes eight tours or more a night, like not wow. me individually, but like all different guides yeah. all kind of out and trying to not run into each other. Wilmington be haunted, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, cute. but I had the, the joke was the guides would say they knew when I was about to arrive or when I had just left because they would pick up on more spiritual activity. So I was honored by that because I was like, oh, that's wonderful. They, you know, the spirits come out to say hello, you know, and then they just say hello to everybody else too. Um, that house is one of the oldest houses in Wilmington. It is uh, now a living museum, which is even more great. I tell people, I'm like, go to the museum, go take the tour. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. Um, and there are ghosts all around that house. I, I imagine in spirit world, it's very crowded because you might walk into a room and be like, oh, there are five people already here. Okay. And then you have to go into another room and be like, oh, there, there are two people in here and they're having a conversation okay cool I'll just go out um the whole property is just mixed with a lot of honestly intelligent spirits from many many different generations and time periods since Wilmington began um I had some cool things happen out there when I was telling tours so much so that my story was less about like the given material for like the haunted stuff that everybody else had. And I would tell stories that just happened on my tour. So 
I think one of the funny things, and I brought this up earlier, I was telling a story and I got the sense that somebody had walked up behind me. Now there's a fence behind me. So I know that nobody physically has walked up behind me. And I, I get the sense that somebody's walked up behind me. And I hear like behind me this kind of hello. And I was like, okay. It was like from a, a woman's voice. But all the while I'm telling a story. I know this is a ghost. And I can't just top, stop the story to be like, wait, everybody. I have heard a ghost this evening. You know, nobody wants that kind of, like that. you know. No. Afterwards. Kind of You're like, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I hear this woman say hello. And then all the while I'm kind of like trying to channel out from the back of my head, be like, hi, uh, you might not know this, but I'm giving a tour right now. There are a bunch of people here. It's a different plane, but I'll talk to you in a minute. And then I, I hear her say hello again. And I feel a hand just like right on my elbow. And it wasn't like a grab. It was just kind of like a hello. And then I felt the hands go to my shoulder just as a final hello. And finally, I was just kind of like spiritually shoving off at that point. I was just like, please, like, I, I'll talk to you in a minute. I just can't right now because there are people, you know. <sighs> so the funny thing is, the reason why I bring that up is somebody I did not know at the time, they were just taking a bunch of photos, just like burst photos back to back to back. And they didn't have the flash on, so I didn't know they were taking photos. And they come up to me later and they say, hey, is this, a, is this what an orb is? And they had three photos, one with an orb behind me. And then the orb is on my elbow. And then the orb is on my shoulder. Wow. Yeah. And that's when I said, okay, <laughs> validation. Yeah, that's cool. Like, um, share. I was trying to spiritually tell someone to fuck off while we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> mom, mom, I'm busy. I'm on the phone. <laughs> Yes. I mean, essentially, like, and there are a number of places, uh, especially when you're working, like, you can't be, it's a different kind of work. Like, I'm performing, I'm not being a spiritualist at that time, right? So, to, Sounds like my job. <laughs> probably like all of our jobs, right? Be like, no, 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 I'm doing this yeah, today. Meanwhile. I'm doing this today. Um, but yeah, there there have been more times than I can honestly count where I've had to be like, spiritually in the back of my mind be like hey no 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 I I don't want to hear that right now there were some creepier spots too where it was like hey you gonna mess up today and I'm like no 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 mm. no <laughs> I guess they have a lot of free time <laughs> um yeah it it's just wild stuff we saw just back at the Bergwin Wright house we saw like a little boy running around a few times we saw a little girl um depending on where she was like if she was higher in the house, she usually seemed fine. If she was lower, uh, she was usually screaming. Um, we saw shadow figures. One time we saw a guy, this was more looked like a guy who had lived and died. And he was leaning up against this tree. By the way, the tree was not there more than 50 years ago, but he was leaning up against this tree. So I think he was more intelligent. And you could see the outline, his arms are crossed over and he's just kind of leaning up and he's looking out at my group and his eyes are glowing white. And it's one of those things where I'm just like, should I be, I, should I be honored that this guy decided to watch my tour or should I be a little creeped out because this guy decided to watch my tour? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> yeah, especially with the glowing eyes thing, you're like, thank you. Don't right. come out. <laughs> it's like, please don't follow. That'd be mm -hmm. cool. Um, yeah, that's interesting. But then also at the Bergwin Wright house, there were spirits that like took a liking to us, just like they took a liking to the people who were working inside the home and spirits who would, they meant us well. And so you know, if we had something negative pop up or something like that, the spirits would kind of buffer a little bit and be like, no, not this group, or hey, not this guy, <laughs> like, not her. Um, so that was, it, it's interesting. It's kind of the whole world that we know in the physical, if you can imagine that in the spiritual and on different planes, that's what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And it's it's fascinating to see the kind of interaction as well as the not interaction that happens. 
how do you like so you're saying that you have this like physical and uh, spiritual ability to understand that there's spirits there you can see them and that's like your personal intuitive um mechanics but do you use like um ghost boxes or any other tools uh to like receive information when you're doing your ghost tours <laughs> so um the tours themselves we don't do that just because it's more of a company standard it's not my company okay. uh, not my rules not my rodeo um so but when, when i'm going out and doing more investigation type stuff or like seance type stuff um sometimes we'll have equipment with us but here's the thing now i know people who are more spiritualist and open-minded and that sort of thing who use these like spirit boxes and stuff like that and it really helps them for me i don't know what it is but i just really suck at like understanding the words when they come through the radio box thing you know and it's just like jarbled words so I love going out with paranormal investigators who understand that stuff. And they're like, did you hear mother or did you hear hello? I'm just listening to this recording and I'm like, yo, I'm not even tapped into this box right now. I'm, I'm tapped into that guy over there, you yeah, know, sure. who's, you know, hanging out in the chair and they're like, Oh yeah, that guy, maybe he's talking to us. I'm like, sure. I, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> some people may take that stuff. Like I, I guess I get a, I'm a little critical in some ways. I'm like, Oh, you're like, I watch some of these ghost shows and I'm like, Oh, please. Like you really think like there's one particular set that there's like three guys that do tours and th they legitimately must have, they must pay someone to like do things to make it really extravagant, you know? And I think that's kind of does a disservice to a lot of the other people, like what you do, you intuitively like interact. These people just like, it, you disregard a lot of things when you see people fake it. <laughs> and it, it says something too, some of these people, when they go in so skeptical and they go in so closed-minded to the spiritual, it also doesn't invite spiritual interaction. That's a good point. Yeah. You know, it, it's, and that's not to say, you know, that you have to be so open-minded and expect something to happen, but it's kind of like a mutual phone call right like you having a funny box is like you holding the phone it's not necessarily mm -hmm. you making the call mm -hmm. interesting yeah no I, I agree with that I think that's really powerful wow this has been awesome thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of this with us this is really cool yes yeah, Th thanks for having me I, I hope I've been able to offer some information on the other side yeah this has yeah, been fun absolutely um so how can people like give us your handles give us your youtube like how can people get a hold of you what services you offer any of that stuff okay so my website is www.quirksandconjure.com on the website it has a lot of information and links such as to my tiktok as well as to the quirks and conjure youtube where on there we do a lot of investigations into the history and the anthropology that make up hauntings cool. as well as the hauntings themselves um, we also try to disprove and make like ask ourselves hard questions, but we also have a Q and A playlist that a lot of people have found helpful that talk about these types of spirits that talk about cleansings in a way to hopefully help people get through whatever haunted thing that they might be going through. Mm -hmm. Now, if that is not enough, um, people can also contact me or my partner for consultations or readings. Um, I don't do so much readings right now. I primarily do consultations with a spiritual connection. So creating understanding on a situation, whereas my partner, he does the readings, like he does the bone readings and he ha has created his own deck and that kind of thing. So we offer a lot of different services all on one little website. So uh, that's quirksandconjure.com. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much. And of course, listeners or watchers, if you're watching us on YouTube, we will include that link below so that you guys can just go ahead and click on it. We're in our show notes. Um, but thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, and listeners, oh. thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we really appreciate you listening as well. And of course, as always, we hope we really you got a lot of out of this. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Perception Anonymous. You can like us on Facebook, Perception Anonymous. You can um, email us, Perception Anonymous at Gmail. <laughs> um, <laughs> and overall, we just really, really appreciate you. So thank you so very much. Um, and as always, Perceptionists, remember. Yay. Cool. Yeah.
I'm gonna finish recording here. Yay, hey, thank you so much. It was so nice yeah. to talk to you.